And basically the sequence is that you have every numerical value in that sequence is the sum of the two values that preceded it, right? So it starts 0, 1, 1, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, and so on, right? As you go through that and, and your numbers get larger and larger, if you set up a ratio, for example, 21 to 13, or then you add those together and you get 34 to 21, right? Um, what will happen is your numbers get bigger and bigger. Like the ratio of, of say, um, 8 to 5 approximates the golden section. 13 to 8 approximates it closer. 21 to 13 approximates it even closer. You know, 34 to 21, 55 to 34, 89 to 55. As you go through and the numbers get bigger and bigger, what happens is you're asymptotically converging in on this golden section relation. You never actually get there. See, you oscillate above it a little, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it. And each time you oscillate, you're getting closer and closer and closer to it. But you only get there at infinity. When your numbers get an infinite, infinitely large, then you're at that golden section. Now, what nature does is, of course, it approximates it because we're all different, right? So you might take some people and their legs are longer or their torso is longer or their arms are long and you measure them and they don't quite come up to the numerical value of, of the golden section, which in round numbers is 1.618 0 three three nine eight nine dot 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 meaning it goes on forever right it's an irrational number like pi for practical use you would probably round it off at 1.6 and be close enough or if you needed to be really precise go 1.618 most people will remember that 1.618 and and um it's pretty easy to remember but geometrically by using the geometry of the pentagon or the double square and the square root of 5, which is inherent in the double square rectangle, you can create the golden section proportion with geometric exactitude, right? Or within the limits of your, your drawing capability. If you could draw with infinite precision, you could geometrically create that golden section. But mathematically or arithmetically, you can't. You can only approximate it to ever finer degrees of precision. So artistically, if you're going to use it, you obviously don't need it, you know, out to 10 or 50 or 100 places. Two or three places is going to be enough, see. But if you know the geometric technique, you can then set it up and you will create a rectangle where the long side is to the short side as 1.618 is to 1. And that gives you that rectangle. And then that was the basis, for example, we'll see a slide here shortly that says, um, that shows the facade of the Parthenon. And it fits perfectly into a golden rectangle. So typically in, in the days of, of building, in, in the old days, there would be a template laid out on the ground, right? The geometry would be drawn out on the ground. Then carpenters would come in. For example, like if you're going to do a, a Gothic cathedral with that old Gaival vault. Here you've got this amazing stonework that comes up and it'll, it'll come to a point, right? And then um, that's usually derived based upon the vesica, which we will look at shortly. The vesica being the feminine geometry. Um, and you've got the, 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 the vault like this. The stone was laid up over wooden formwork that was erected by the carpenters, right? Now the carpenter, the, the formwork obviously is not part of the finished structure. You would, you would build this uh, elegant formwork, the masons would come and lay up their stonework over it, and then once the stonework, the masonry work had set up, you would then remove the, 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 um, the formwork of, of the wood. But when the formwork was, it would be laid out on the ground, and then once it was assembled, it would be raised like this. We still find that idea 
in symbolism, for example, in the raising of Osiris from, 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 uh, from death to life. In Freemasonry, there is in the third degree the raising of the master builder who has been slain from, from, a, a, from level to perpendicular. And again, this recapitulates this idea. When uh, the Egyptians would raise an obelisk, that was symbolizing the same thing. From, because the horizontal was considered to be um, emblematic of the non-living. And the vertical was considered to be an emblematic of the living. And the idea was that all of primitive life coming up through the hierarchy of ever more complex life, what we're seeing is the orientation from this now to the human being, the orientation of this. Mm -hmm. So it also symbolizes the journey of life, see? And now we as human beings are vertical. Our compass, um, the shaft of our compass here like this now, is our spine. You know, the seat of the chakras that we were just looking at. And our orientation is vertical from earth to heaven. And our, our compass, our um, tree of life, can be thought of as the vertical spine that links heaven to earth. And that was the idea of the temple. And the gnomon pole, or the obelisk, or whatever it was, the vertical shaft that was the first mark that there was going to be a temple emerging from that site, you see.